I know we can all learn to be happier. So let's talk about four essential ways that we can practice happiness. Welcome to Mindset Monday. What is happiness? How do we reach it? And when we do, will we be able to maintain it? There is one way of thinking that this relentless pursuit of happiness can be egoistic and more self-centered in the process if you're only thinking about the relentless happiness of yourself and not including how that affects others. Now, Christopher McCandless, an author of Into the Wild, he put it as happiness is only real when it's shared. So can we learn to be happier? Here are four essential ways to practice happiness. Now, before we jump into the four essential things that you can do to practice happiness and make yourself happier, I wanna bring your attention to a recent study done by psychologists, Hillingsworth and Daniel Gilbert. And what they said is a wandering mind is an unhappy mind. Can you believe that we as humans, on average, generally spend 50%, so half of our time, in the present moment? Now, the reason that you need to keep listening is because you want these four essential things that you can practice to become happier so that you're spending more than 50% of your time in the present state, which will increase your happiness and keep your mind focused so that it's not a wandering mind all the time. Scientists also compiled data on chronic happiness levels and found that we tend to be our happiest when we are in the present moment, regardless of what it is that we're doing. So it's really important to be in that present moment because what they find is that you are more in touch with all of your surroundings. So whenever you notice your brain following future-oriented thoughts and ideas, choose not to follow that train of thought, but instead give your mind a nudge towards the present. Try to reorient your focus on what's going on around you. I know it's no easy exercise, but with some practice, you can reinforce your ability to stay in the present. Number two is volunteer. So according to a 2020 study on the correlation between volunteering and well-being, what was found is that when you take the attention off yourself and you're doing something for other people, it makes you feel good. So even if you can't do this on a daily basis, look for ways that you can offer acts of random kindness or that you can offer not just your money, but your time and energy to make someone else's day and people in an organization and their days much better. Number three, move your body. Now, physical activity isn't just a way to increase your flexibility and your fitness. It is essential for your mental health. There is a reason why doctors recommend 150 minutes a week of moderate physical activity, and that is broken down into five days a week with 30 minutes of moderate exercise. Now, you can choose what those things are, but they also help the neurotransmitters that are found in our bodies that increase our happiness levels and make us happier. Regular exercise has also been proven to have therapeutic benefits, namely in alleviating psychiatric illnesses, promoting brain injury recovery, and preventing neurodegenerative diseases. Last but not least, number four, feed your mind. This is one of my favorites. So the thoughts that you continuously tell yourself and that you um, contemplate on a regular basis have an effect on your happiness levels and your satisfaction. So if you're always thinking in the negative and taking a negative perspective, then you'll probably have frustration and resentment entail. But If you try to look at the positive in things, I know it's not always easy, but if you look at the silver lining in really difficult, dark situations, then you will be able to increase your happiness. And moreover, if intentionally on a daily basis, part of your daily habits are consuming positive content like self-help books or podcasts, surrounding yourself with positive people, all of these things really do help to increase your happiness levels. So neuroscience does show us that there is more to happiness than just our DNA or our predisposition to optimism. You've learned four essential secrets here to increasing your happiness, and I hope you will use these. And those were, one, staying in the present moment and really appreciating your surroundings. Number two, look for ways to volunteer, give back to others, and also increase their happiness levels by your gift of giving or random acts of kindness time, service, or energy. Number three, move your body because that helps with serotonin, dopamine, and all of those positive neurotransmitters that are found in our body that increase our happiness levels. And last but not least was 
feed your mind. So make sure you have all that positivity and you create a natural surrounding for yourself with intentional focus on positive content. Now, if you like this Mindset Monday and you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, just please click below where you see subscribe and as well, I'd love for you to head over to my website. It's www.amanda-desilva.com forward slash newsletter. You can sign up for my weekly newsletters. That way you'll be alerted each week. You will also get a blog that accompanies it and some of my interesting details that I include in my newsletter. And I would love for you to check out the course that I have on discovering your purpose, because I know that that will take you to new levels and new heights and really set you on course to have an absolutely purpose-driven, value-driven year. Thanks for sharing this space with me and I'll see you next week.